welcome to the show. This is East Tennessee Music Scene on the Rise. I am Scott Thomas. Next to me is Bobby Moore. Well, today we are sitting down with Jacob Bill. Of VR what? Music Group. What? How are you doing today, bud? Good. I'm good. doing good. <laughs> in case you haven't noticed, we are in his fancy studio here with the nice soundboard on the back and all sorts of different music pieces and parts. Yes, he's done a lot of work for a lot of our local musicians. And they were very appreciative, and they kind of pushed him our ways, so and I were stuck with him. Yay! Yay! So, who all have you worked with? Uh, most recently, the people that would that have done really well would be uh, Autumn Reflection, which this group is very familiar with. Uh, I did their five-song EP, and I think one or two of their songs have ended up on the radio. Uh, and Silent Horror, uh, they're actually out of Crossville. They did a ten-song album, and blew up with it they they sell out of everything they do so and both of them hopefully will be coming back soon <laughs> um, hint, hint. and a few other local and small acts of course this past year uh rona has done a number on the music industry and um i'm no different luckily i have other streams of uh income in the music business unrelated to recording bands but uh, I've talked to a ton of them and just now in January going into February they're starting to actually get on the books so I'm, I'm expecting to probably do as much in the first quarter as I did all last year. Oh that's awesome. So it, it is going to pick back up and um, I encourage all bands to pick it back up because there's a lot that you can record. Now's the perfect time. People are ready to get it back out and listen to your music you know and I'm always willing to take care of the music artists, especially right now. I understand that there's not a lot of money going around. Um, and I'm a big believer in helping musicians more than I am just bleeding them dry. I mean, obviously, my prices reflect what I can offer them, but I'm also very forgiving and willing to help. So. Yeah, you produce a lot of quality as opposed to massive quantities of little quality. Yeah, I'm not the fix it in the mix edit guy. If you come to me, you're probably going to hate me a few sessions because I'm going to push you to actually try and uh, play correctly so that it goes in right instead of being fixed after the fact, which uh, some people really love and they swear by it and some people just don't get it. Most people that don't get it don't come to me anyway because they don't want to be pushed like I put. <laughs> well, every band should want a finished product that's going to represent them the best way possible. And I assume that's exactly what your vision is to uh, present them the best way that possibly can be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it. when I'm done with the song, you're going to sound good, but it is definitely going to be a reflection of where you are as a band, as a musician, and your maturity. Um, and I always say to bands, the first song is usually good, not amazing. second song is amazing because you've learned. That's I, awesome. I believe that, as we were talking before we started the show, uh, you said you used to play yourself in bands. Yeah. So that's a good transference of taking what you used to do back then and flipping it over to this. So how did you get started? Uh, I started with guitar. My brother was a guitar player uh, and kind of got me started. And then he and I were in a, a prog metal band way back called Seraphim, which was, we did all kinds of weird stuff like concept albums and I'd shred all over the place and do all that stuff. And then I moved on to an 80s band and spent five years doing that. Then I moved to Nashville, um, went to school there. And while I was there, I answered an ad on Craigslist for someone looking for a guitar player. Come to find out it was a girl named Eowyn. And a month later, I was on a tour bus playing shows with like Brian Head Welch, Thousand Foot Crutch, Switchfoot. Oh, cool. Um, which ironically, at the time, I didn't know who they were. <laughs> now I feel <laughs> stupid, but uh, I spent three years with her in Nashville, um, touring around and playing, and then kind of gave that up when I got married and um, started doing this. I was doing this at the same time in Nashville full-time um, at the height of the metal scene in Nashville, uh, but moved here and started doing this. And I still play, but I don't play anywhere near as well as I used to. I play when I need to play. Yeah. But uh, I don't actively practice. So, do you ever contribute into any of the bands you record? Do you ever do any parts to that, or kind of show them anything that you might do differently in a specific uh, guitar riff or anything like that? Oh yeah, all the time. Uh, 
a lot of my bands will tell you, I'll tape their fingers, I'll slap the pick out of their hand and give them a real man's pick. <laughs> I make them use heavy strings. You know, there's a lot of that. Anywhere from drummers, bass players, guitar players, singers. I let my wife Stephanie take care of the singers for the most part. But yeah, there's a lot of guidance on every tiny little detail, which they love. They, they want to learn. Most of them, by the time they get here, they want to learn. When you put that much into recording an album with, I mean, as a band, I, I only assume, because I'm not a musician in any way, shape, or form, I've never played an instrument, my fingers don't work that way, but I would assume that every band member in a band wants to produce the best quality product, so they should take the uh, advice of somebody like you in a recording studio that knows about the recording and things involved in that, so they can produce the best quality product out there. That's just my opinion. I mean, I'm, I'm no one, obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they, they always... Because when, when a band comes to record with me, I also support them by going to see them live. I take friends with me. You've seen me out with yes. people. Um, and I have never had a band come in here, finish a song, and go play a show, and the show has not been ten times better than the first time I saw them. Because I usually go see a band before they come in here, so I know what I'm getting into. Yeah. Uh, I can usually tell what's going to need help and what's not just by watching them live and uh, their shows improve greatly they're That's more awesome. comfortable so you know a lot of bands when they start out they play a show and they they're good their music's good but you can tell they're stiff once they stop having to pay attention to how their hands are moving or what they're doing and they're comfortable because they know hey this is what we recorded this is what it's supposed to sound like they kill it it's kind so, of a confidence builder to be in the studio and know what you're wanting to sound like and then be on stage and you're like this is what it's supposed to sound like. We're going to do it this way and just go from there and have fun. Because that's, that's the point in being in a band, I assume. You have to have fun on stage so you can make the audience happy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you, you, they usually come in kind of knowing, but when they go back on stage after they record, they're playing what they recorded. So it's kind of like the difference between we wrote this song and, hey, we're playing that song we recorded. So they already know exactly where everything's supposed to be, yeah. how it's supposed to go. So it's... It's a lot lifted off their shoulders. Progression and arrangements, just second hand. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And that always changes. Arrangements always change in here. Of course. <laughs> always. You, you make sure of that, don't you? <laughs> uh, it, it's rare that a song leaves the same way it came in. And uh, no one's ever really fought on that. They, it's probably like, oh, that sounds so much better. So. Little tweaks aren't, aren't bad. I would just no, no, they're never bad. And I always let the band make the choice on that. I may have a strong opinion of it, but, you know, it's not my music. Yeah. So... If they want to do it that way, I'll, I might roll my eyes, but hey, we're going to do it. We'll yeah. make it work. The band's got to be happy with the finished product. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> but, but, I mean, that, that band only knows what that band does. Someone like you who's worked with multiple bands and see exactly what works on the recordings. You know, kind of, you know where things are supposed to go in the song and how they're supposed to go. How they're supposed yeah. to get arranged. And, well, it benefits you guys to listen to some of so often. Yes, definitely. <laughs> well, the, uh, the, a lot of bands come in here and they, they have a really good song, but it's like, I'm a guitar player, I'm playing one part, and I'm like, well, what about the other stuff? What about layers? What about, you know, background, vo background vocals, background guitar, uh, even synth sometimes? You never know. That stuff they don't think about, which isn't normal. But that's why if they come here, if they choose me to also produce it and I'll just record it, I do that. Yeah. And there's been a lot of instances where they'll leave and I'll actually add it myself. Then they'll come in and they'll be like, what's that? <laughs> that's cool. I'm like, cool, great. I rolled the dice. We won. Yeah. <laughs> so. Kind of adds an extra dynamic to the music that they are already making. Yeah. If yeah. You know. I mean, it's <clears throat> like, uh, like Autumn Reflection. When they came in, they had these great songs. They had thought them through. But uh, watch this live has tons of stuff behind the main guitar to the point where we actually pulled the focus away from the rhythm guitar onto that in bass and it completely changed the, the grind of that song and it's it's great because of it and they like it too so that's awesome I've, in my experience i found that the easiest bands to work with are when the band member knows how to or each band member knows how to play multiple instruments and they, they seem to get a lot of tighter they, they get tighter, but they also know, they understand the respect between people. Like if you get a guitar player that doesn't really understand how bass works, 
they're going to ride them the whole session about doing it, and I'm back here going, no, they need to do it this way. Yeah. So if they understand how bass works with, within the band, then they're like, they know, and they can point out to me, because I don't notice everything. I don't know their songs as well as I do. But they can, uh, they can point to me if it doesn't work, and I can say, yes, he's doing it right. He knows to leave, leave him alone, let him do his thing, unless there's a problem. Yeah. So you're right, it's, it helps. Nobody knows how to play drums. Drums are, drummers are drummers. Yeah. Right, Gunner? <laughs> <laughs> mm. yeah, that was a shot at the autumn reflection drummer <laughs> <laughs> but I, uh, I get along with drummers really well um, if you followed me enough you know I do a lot of drum tracking not just band tracking but people will actually come here to do drums because I am awful with drums when it comes to time I'll spend three hours tuning and before we even hit record Okay. so drummers like coming here which is good I, I like that I like working with them so. you have I know off camera we were talking about the way people come in here so you have specific people come in one at a time like guitarists will come in and do their part and then you have individual people coming in like drummers do their part and just individually rather than all of them at once uh yeah generally um i find that the bands that i'm getting here lately it's usually at least the drummer and the guitar player at first because you have to have them to start the song yeah uh and then i'll do drums and then my i almost always it'll be drums and then we'll stop until I have done any editing or any mixing because I want everyone else to come in and record to a great drum sound because I find that I can get over the over-editing that has hit music lately, especially in rock, by making the drum sound really good and tight and then letting everyone else flow with it. Yeah. So that way, instead of everybody sounding like they've been edited to a grid, there's some flow, but it's still tight. Yeah. So, and I learned that in Nashville, because uh, in Nashville, when I was there, it was put them all in a room and hit record and go for it. And that's where I learned a lot of my tone. So get it right the first time. But then out there, everybody's crazy good as a musician. So you didn't have to worry about as much. But I understand. I've never been any good in recording studio at all. That's why I've never recorded anything. I hate a metronome. But a passion, I hate it. You would not like here. <laughs> so you play with metronome? Oh yeah, every time. I, I actually will smack people. Just, <laughs> if you can't be on time, you're gonna feel it. <laughs> it works, but yeah, always loud and proud in here. Well, that's awesome. You you actually take the time to work with everybody and get the sound right the first time, rather than coming back multiple times to redo and everything like that and if they have to redo it over and over again you're going to have it right by the end of their session yeah hopefully i'd rather spend an hour with you like a guitar player getting you to play it right in the first time and it feel great than spend four hours after you leave fixing it yeah you know i i know how to turd polish as i like to say but i don't want to and um you want it to be as, as genuine as possible yeah i want it to sound like you yeah and if, if you are loose, I'm going to push it out of you the best I can, but it's still going to be you. Yeah. And if you are a really good, really tight player, it's going to sound like you. So I, I, I love a lot of modern music where it's perfect, like where you can tell each note has been lined up. There's a style and place for it. But um, I don't like working in it. I can do it, and I've done it before. But uh, I'm a fan of the Beartooths, and the Guns N' Roses, and the uh, wild, screaming proud, who gives a crap, let's just hit record and go music, especially in rock and heavy stuff. That, yeah. that, that feel of the middle finger, let's do this, have fun, has just disappeared in music lately. You, you said that you go to shows first, you know, if you know you're going to be recording an upcoming artist. You ever went to a show and seen them on stage and be like, these guys are going to be just fantastic. We're getting here and it's just a train wreck. Without naming names. Generally, no. It's taken many years to get to a point where usually if you're a band that's really difficult or just not good, you're not going to seek me out because you don't want to pony up for it. Uh, and I'm not expensive by any means. In fact, I'm one of the cheaper ones, despite what people visual They see this and they're like, oh, I can't afford that. Yeah. That's not the case. Um, most of the bands that I work with are respectful, especially here in the last two or three years. I've not had one problem, and uh, some of them even surprised me. And uh, if you're an inexperienced band, I go to see you, and you're not great, 
but you're respectful and you're kind and you you know you, especially if you treat my wife with respect and talk to her yeah i will do everything i can to help you but if you're awful and you're <clears> just like sup <laughs> now nah, i'm moving on i don't have time now you said she's a uh, you're a vocal coach too, how did you guys meet college college yes yeah, so I, I was her tutor we were in classes together um yeah. See where this is going. That was a long time <laughs> ago. <laughs> that was that was ten years ago. The pieces just kind of fell in place yeah. for you guys to come together. Yeah. Well, I moved to Nashville, and then um, we stayed in touch very briefly, and then one day I get just just got tired of her bad boyfriends, so I stepped in and now we're married. <laughs> nice. So, do you, uh, does your wife also work with bands when they come in? Yeah. Uh, about every time there's a vocalist, it's. I, it's been a long time since I've had a singer in here she hasn't worked with. Um, she writes a lot of harmonies. She pretty much does a training session with every singer that comes through here. And they ask. They want it. Yeah. Um, about posture, uh, pitch. She'll, she'll warm them up with the keyboard and go through the whole process. You know, uh, I found that I can do some of it with singers, but I would rather focus on what they're going to record and how we're going to layer and let her worry about how they're delivering it. Yeah. A lot of singers are very, they can maybe they'll hit the pitch, but they sound kind of whiny or kind of weak. And getting singers to just let it out in the studio like they do live is hard. Mm. Um, Some of them may be a little, a little bit uncomfortable being in the studio rather than being on stage because they're, they're used to being on the stage, but when they come in here and they're around people that maybe they're not as comfortable with, they just, they're like, I want to do this right, but I'm just holding back because I, I don't know how far I can go with it. Yeah. I find that a lot of singers there, and it's funny, I've never had a singer come in here that was comfortable at first. They'll go on stage, they're screaming, they're hollering, they're jumping around. You're like, wow, that guy has confidence. And then they come in here, they stand there like this, and they sing the whole time. And I'm like, dude, relax. It's relax. So uh, it doesn't take long. And that's actually why I just recorded vocals for the new Absent from the Body album yeah. with Jason. Jason yeah. um, he actually did a guest session with me on a band. I can't even remember their name. I should. They've been long gone for a long time. But he did a guest speaker, came in here, and loved it so much working in here mm. that um, they wanted to do the whole album in here. You know, he's had some health problems. Yeah. yeah. And he knew that if he came here, I could try to get as much out of him as quickly as possible yeah. so that he could get through it and uh, he sounded great on it. I think it's the best work he's done. Uh, the guy that's mixing it now agrees as well and uh, it was fun. He was relaxed and she helped him with that too. So. I went to high school with uh, Jason Mike Mahan. He, he's always been a fantastic guy. We love you buddy. Definitely. We're, we're all thinking about you. We, I've been in the scene with him since I was gosh in high school and they always do good stuff. And the new stuff is really good, by the way. Yeah. I, I, I know I only did the vocals, but the rest of it was really good, too. So, so while you're out there, like, smacking people's hands and stuff for not being on time, she's over there joke punching people for not singing. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. I think singers love to come here. They sound good. Uh, I do stuff with a bunch of my hardware to make them sound the way they think they should sound. A lot of times, singers don't understand in the studio. It's very raw. So I try to give it to them how it's going to sound in the mix, uh, which I can do really well with a lot of compression going in. Um, but they also know that I'm going to go, no, no, <laughs> sing it again. <laughs> so I, I usually make singers sing at least this one part at least three times every time. So what was your uh, like most interesting experience for doing that? You don't have to name Oh, her. gosh. I had a singer in Nashville, and she started, and this was in one of those big studios that are almost long gone by now, and there was a room over here, just a window. She started singing, and she was like, I just I can't do it. And the lights turn off, and we're like, man, whatever. Singers do that all the time, right? And you hear a bunch of rustling. <laughs> she was like, singing in the other room. Oh, my. <laughs> I was like to do this <laughs> that was one of the weirdest sessions interesting yeah there you see a lot of strange stuff there's always stuff you should do 
But if you can do it the way you do it, I don't care. Yeah. yeah it's only true half the time, though. <laughs> Sometimes it's a, it's a, you know, security blanket. Yeah. Yeah. That's especially true with guitar players. Oh, Lord. Don't you like my distortion pedal? I'm like, yeah, I like the roar that I'm hearing and nothing else, but, you know. <laughs> so the more pedals you have isn't necessarily the better. I spent my whole career touring with no pedals. None. So, I used to have a little band room. I had a 16 channel PV uh, board. It was powered. Yeah. And I could do absolutely everything I wanted to do that board. I did not need any pedals whatsoever. No. And it looks like you have enough gear here and you can pretty much do what you need to. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Now, um, by the way, there's another room over there. Yes, this here is just one piece of the puzzle. They've got tracking rooms in other specific spots around this area that we uh, we got to mention the the behind the scenes people now. Oh yeah, we have a we have two new behind the scenes people going on. We have our sound general back here, Matt Bobo, Bobo. Matt Bobo, and Lauren, Lauren Hopkins. So we we finally broke down and got Scott Anthony some uh, company behind the camera because he gets lonely back there. Yes. And for your viewing pleasure, we have now two angles. Facebook Live. Oh, Facebook Live, too. We can't forget about you guys now. Yeah, we can't forget about the Facebook Live people. But this whole, show, this whole show is about you guys, the viewers. <laughs> and we, ha we want to make sure that you guys have the best viewing possible, and we will try our best to improve this and make it more awkward for Bobby and I. What do you think I'm wearing a suit today? Just because I can. Well, let's talk a little bit about how people can get in touch with you. I know you said you're going to be booked for quite a while, but once that is kind of gone through, how can people get a hold of you, get in touch with you? Do you have website, phone number? I know you have a, a, web, uh, a Facebook page that people can probably contact you through. Yes, so I have a website. It's just vrmusicgroup.com. Um, the contact page in there has my email address as well as my phone number. Um, I would prefer you email me because there's no telling what I'm doing. And like most people who are under the age of 35, don't call me. <laughs> don't text me either. I'm still a business. I don't do texting with business unless I have to. But um, you can also reach me through Facebook. I, I am 100% fine with you messaging me through Facebook. Most people do. Um, you can just search Jake Veal. I'm the only one in this area. I think it's I don't know the link. I'm sure it's like slash Jake and Veal one or some nonsense yeah. like that. I have a business page for VR Music Group, but because of Facebook's awful algorithm, I don't really do much with it. Yeah. Um, it it's hard to stay in touch with people and for them to see the posts. But you can also message me there. I do actually monitor it. Yeah. Uh, or you can check out a few old pictures. Uh, the website has videos I've mixed. I've done some live DVDs. It's got a music player with stuff. Um, doesn't have any really, really new stuff because a lot of the new stuff I've done, fans haven't released yet. So yeah. out of respect for them, I don't release it until it's actually out. Um, but that's the best way to get in touch with me. And it's usually as soon as you message me, I'll reply. That's awesome. And I would prefer people to start at least starting conversation for booking as soon as possible because I have so many bands that message me for, hey, we want to do this. I'll give them the quote. And they'll be like, all right, we want to do it. Let's get a date that by the time you want to do it, I could already have it booked. Yeah. And once I, st I don't do 20 bands at a time because of the way I do it, it takes a long time. So many bands only have weekends, yeah. uh, especially ones that aren't here in the Knoxville area, that I get booked quick out. Yeah. And then I need to, I don't want to just work every, every weekend all the time. So I do occasionally do that. And as you know, I'm on vacation a lot. But we'll make sure we have all of your information, pertinent information down in the info section. So if you haven't caught what he just said about how to get a hold of him, just scroll down below and you'll see in the info section all the stuff that's pertinent to his studio and what he's doing. And we'll get that all out there for you. If you call me, just give me some grace on the time to call you. <laughs> anyway, get a hold of this guy, VR Music Group. Jacob Veal is his name. His wife is an awesome vocal coach. Even though she hasn't been on camera right now, she's back in the background there. She also does voice lessons. Just putting that out there. Yes, well, voice how lessons. How do we get a hold of her? Yeah, how do we get a hold of her? Through me. Oh. So if you need vocal lessons or you want vocal lessons, 
She's awesome. Do it. VR right. Music Group. This has been ACC Music Scene, and we're out.